Welcome to Secular Soup. Stay tuned for real talk about atheism, feminism, politics, parenting, and whatever the fuck else Amy and Amy want to talk about, because this is their show. And get ready for a whole lot of motherfucking profanity. You want to hear a secret? Uh, I couldn't. I won't tell anybody. Go ahead. If I sit next to you, I'm going to get gonorrhea. It's going to jump into me. Just two ladies hanging out. Is it okay for me to make fun of his neck waddle if I make fun of my own neck waddle? I'm not sure. That's a real ethical conundrum. Would you know if you were born a lizard person or can you be like adopted into the... I think you know. We're such professionals. We really are. Buckle up, bitches. It's time to have some soup. I'm Amy with a Y. And I'm Amy with an I. We're just two blueberries floating in a bowl of tomato soup. And we have reached episode 101. So cool. We are recording on Easter Sunday. He is risen. Um, nice. Hashtag blessed. And hashtag blushed. Blah, 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 whatever. I can't All talk anymore. Things. I've been quarantined too long. So with no human contact. My throat is scratchy, so I'm convinced I'm dying. So mine is too. Mine's kind of. I think it's because I talked for four hours straight last night, and that's we just really not did. We talked cool. for four hours straight last night. It was fun though. Was so, fun. I ha- we have a guest on today that I have been wanting to talk to for a while, and just haven't gotten my shit together enough to like set something up. <laughs> so, um, Diana Burdett is here, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and she is going to talk to us about homeschooling, which is a topic that has been on my mind before and a lot more on my mind currently, especially with people um, doing the online schooling in quarantine, because we're recording this in the time of COVID-19. So assuming that their world is still here later, assuming we actually to a get out of this at any right, point. Right. Then you'll be listening to this and then this will be valuable. So Diana, do you want to um, introduce yourself and just kind of tell us a little bit about... Um, Tell us a little bit about you and then kind of how you got into homeschooling or why why that was a decision you initially made. Right. Yes. So hello, everybody. Hello. I am a first generation Guatemalan American. And so I traditionally am not a homeschooled mm. child. I was mm-hmm. not a homeschooled child and I would, did not come from a homeschool family. I am absolutely a product of public the public school system Mm -hmm. and um and mostly because I am a first generation right and so in the 80s when I was growing up it was uh looked down on to speak Spanish and uh the schools themselves would tell our parents and our family members don't speak to them in Spanish at home goodness they need to oh yeah unfortunate too so (laughs) So we we definitely were pushed into public schooling and listen mm-hmm. to listen to your teachers. They are mm-hmm. they are going to be the key to your success here in America. Is is where we right. where I came from. So, mm-hmm. but um, let's fast forward that I uh, I grew up in California, but we traveled. I traveled myself. I left my home when I was 17, moved up north to San Francisco, moved back down south, moved to Las Vegas, and then ended up in Chicago. (laughs) Uh, And then that's where I met my my soon-to-be husband. His name is Dylan, Dylan Burdett. His name is uh, I, Dr. Dylan, medical detective, mm-hmm. just so we He's all Dr. know. Dr. Dylan. <laughs> that's his title. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. that's my husband. Dr. Dylan mm-hmm. is my husband. <laughs> yes. And he is a homeschool child. So his family was a homeschooling mm-hmm. family. And he, uh, when he and I decided to get married, mm-hmm. I did not want children. <laughs> hey, me <laughs> <And> too. So- <laughs> Solid. So I said no, but he yeah. wanted, I don't know, a whole baseball team. Yeah. Um, we had a lot of conversations and six years into our marriage, I said, okay, let's try one mm-hmm. uh, and then, and then we'll try two. <laughs> and then, and that that's was what, it for us. Yeah. That's what gets you is the conversation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a conversation. He's really good at conversation. <laughs> so um <laughs> so then he said I would really like the children to be homeschooled. Now, 
he didn't say I would like to homeschool the children. He said I would like the children to be homeschooled. And <laughs> to I said, be "Well, good luck with that, buddy." <laughs> <laughs> Which is the appropriate like, response to that. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, "Well, have fun with that. I mm-hmm. I will go back to school and earn a degree mm-hmm. and get my things straight." Yeah. He um he was in a PhD program at the time. Mm-hmm. So it all came down to logic and it was more logical for him to continue that program and complete it mm-hmm. uh, than for me to start one. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> so we said, all right, you become a doctor and I will homeschool. Mm-hmm. The ch- I will give it a try. I will yeah. give it a shot. Um, I wasn't a stranger to education. I, I had done some tutoring. I had worked independently as a tutor and then I worked through Sylvan Learning Center mm-hmm. as oh, okay. a tutor. Mm-hmm. Um, and despite being told I couldn't speak Spanish at home, I still learned Spanish. So I am also well, bilingual. Good. And so I would do trans translation services yeah. and do tutoring through tra- with translation services. So that's one thing I wish I could go back and redo is me to learn Spanish. It's honestly, it's such a great skill to have yeah. and to be bilingual and it's needed. Yeah. And I wish I would have. I'm from San Antonio and that. I can't, my entire family can speak Spanish and I cannot. It's embarrassing, actually. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you, it's never too late. I no. know. <laughs> I'm way too 40 for that. Yeah. 40. Way too 40 yeah. for that. <laughs> she really is. And she's got to keep all this podcasting knowledge up there and can't, you know. Make Plus, I have to keep else, all my so. kids' names straight. That's enough. It's oh, a lot yeah. of work. Yeah. So much work. Wait, how many How many children do you have, Amy, um, with an I? I have three, and then my oh, fiance okay. has three. So oh, okay. we have six. So, I thought you yeah, had like you, 14. You, that was my assumption. So. Yeah. Six, 14, Whatever. Tomato. Close enough. It's all – like once they outnumber you, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yes. I, Mm-hmm. That's just, I have I have two, matter. so they couldn't really gang up because it's two against yeah. two, so it works out. Better. That's why we stopped at two. Yeah, Smart. you can't have we that third be one. You have yeah. two hands; you can grab two people. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Once you have three, you have to decide which one runs into the street. Yeah, it's right. a whole another level at three. So Ooh. yeah, it, it really, really is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, so yeah, your your beginning so, of homeschooling, like what was that like? Yeah. So then, it's, um, I I started really early with Mm -hmm. my oldest he is now six and Mm -hmm. uh we started homeschooling at three years old okay Okay. and um yeah so we started early because i didn't know what else to do with him god damn it no (laughs) (laughs) oh i understand that you're just like you know what you're learning your numbers because i'm tired of this been there yeah what the yep, hell am I going to do with you? So, uh, yeah, so we just started schooling. We we started doing, you know, learning our a- basic stuff, learning our ABCs mm-hmm. and um, shapes and colors and whatnot in Spanish and in English. Nice. And, and then it kind of evolved into I'm getting bored of mm-hmm. circles and squares. And so how about we move into geometry? And mm-hmm. let's look at how – these shapes interact with the real world and what degrees right. is and um mm-hmm. and let's nice. look at physics and let's look at uh, magnetism and uh, electricity and and he's at this point you know three four mm-hmm. five and we are studying well because they're fascinated by gravity. it they are oh yeah yeah they love it yeah and if yeah. you break it down easy enough they just eat it right up they just they want to learn they absorb yes. everything at that yes. age yeah and it it was very successful. We were very mm-hmm. successful Good. in our education journey. So it was exciting for both of us. And I I was learning how to provide information that a four-year-old, a really, really thick information that a four-year-old could mm-hmm. understand in a way that a four-year-old could understand. And and then his brother came along and he, mm-hmm. I just, we continued. And since, since the older siblings already homeschooling, the mm-hmm. younger sibling just kind of jumped in. He was might there well. during the lesson. Yeah. So might as well. Now I have a six-year-old who can break down how electricity works. Wow. And I have a four-year-old who is reading and writing. Oh so my gosh. it's, it's, uh, it's exciting. And, and, 
it's empowering. So yeah. it's like, all right, let's, let's continue doing this. So yeah. yeah. Have you ever used any kind of like pre-made curriculum or is it all you just kind of finding your own ways to teach them the things that you want them to know? <sighs> That's a really great question because mm-hmm. in the homeschooling world, mm-hmm. uh, curriculum, most most homeschooling tools are tied to a religion, and I'm an right. atheist. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, you, oh, yeah, this shit. show is very religious. We actually have a wrong podcast. Yeah. Uh, anyway. yeah. <laughs> I am an, I'm a proud atheist, and I will scream it at the top of the mountain. So All right. Just don't tell too many people. To go, You'll be okay. No. Yeah. This episode will never see the light of day. <laughs> <laughs> So it's really difficult to find something that's pre-made. Mm-hmm. And, that makes sense. And, and, and not so Ken Ham. <laughs> yes. Yes. He makes a so, lot of science books, Amy, with yeah. quotes around it. Science. Mm-hmm. Also, I started very young. So at three mm-hmm. years old, you don't really need to start with the curriculum, right? Right. Basics. True. Yeah. Uh, but – it, within two years, it's five, we were at five years old. And so then we needed a curriculum. So okay. I started looking at curriculums. Mm-hmm. But again, the pre-made curriculums, you know, either you run into creationism or you find things that the, that you're forcing your child to do. And yes. so I decided to do something completely different mm-hmm. and start building our own curriculum. Uh, cool. And and that was all child led. So, mm-hmm. so would you consider what you're doing like unschooling or student led no. learning that type of thing? No, definitely student led learning, not okay. unschooling. Not because unschooling. we do no, because we do. I, I found that there was a need to teach him to sit down for extended periods of time. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, it, it's not sense. always necessary for every mm-hmm. child. I would not do that for my four-year-old right. one because he's four, mm-hmm. but also because he has a way of grasping things in a mm-hmm. deeper way in a shorter period of time, whereas right. the older one needs more time. And so it's very student led, absolutely yeah. without a doubt, but not unschooling because okay. there are there are systems that we need to use in order mm-hmm. to – we need consistency with the older ones. So. Sure. It's weird how kids are always so di- – like you have that first one and you think, I know everything about parenting now. Mm-hmm. But then you have the second kid and they're such a completely different person yeah. than the first it's one really that you rude. have to like never redo that. everything. <laughs> never. I never thought that. No, I me. Like, oh, I did. I thought I had it. I totally it thought back. it. I was <laughs> you, like the no. best parent ever. And then yeah, the next kid came was, around, and he was completely different. I thought and then parenting my was a lot of. Daughter came and threw the bomb at everything. I'm like, okay, I don't know anything. Yeah, I, I thought it was a lot of <laughs> you put these things into your child, you teach them these things, and they become everything this kind sticks. of person. Every lesson yeah. you teach them, they apply to their lives instantly. Right, and so the second yeah. kid I've should come out just house. like the first one. <laughs> yeah, no, not me. Yeah, I terrible. knew there was a trick. I yeah. just knew there was a trick. So, <laughs> Smart. I, was like, I am not allowing him to lull I was, me I was into beyond. a false sense of security. <laughs> yeah. I was above yeah. any tricks that could be played, so I was just yeah. <laughs> I was blindsided. No, I, I knew there was going to be a twist, so I just mm-hmm. you know I just <laughs> went big ahead plot twist. It. Second kid, yeah, yes, always there always is. So do so, you? Yeah, um, are, not whole, unschooled, but yeah, but mm-hmm. we did create our own. Okay. I, I mean, the reason that this has been that I've thought about this a lot, and I, I've probably talked about this on the show. I don't know if I have just fast forward, ignore me. I don't care. I just block um, you out. You, yeah, she just, she just puts it on mute and does something else. So if you want to do that, that's fine. But <laughs> so I have, I have two boys also, and um, I've always been a huge advocate of public schools and I went to college and I loved school and like, I would go to college forever if I could. Cause I, for me, I loved the social aspect of it. I loved Mm. being able to learn new things and pick the classes I want. And like, it was great. It was something my brother found traumatic. I mean, when he was a kid, he's an introvert and has a little bit of anxiety. He's never been really diagnosed with anything, but you know, he's kind of, he's a little bit anxious, but when he was a kid, he would just sob and cry when he 
had to go to school. And my mom talks about how she had to like pry his fingers off of the car door one time because he was trying to hold on to it and didn't want to go into school. And that's how his whole childhood was. But back in the 80s, it was just, that's just like what you did, you know, (laughs) you had to go to school and it didn't matter if you didn't want to go to school. You just, you had to go. And he never went on to college because he frankly just didn't want to. Like he, he's a very, very smart guy and he writes screenplays and he has interests, but you know, going to college just wasn't one of them. And now that I have kids, my I look at my oldest, who's 16 now, and he's a lot like that. Like when he was a kid, he would cry when it was time to go to school, at least by like second grade. Kindergarten was great. He loved it. First grade was pretty great. He loved that. But by second grade, it was starting to be, you know, at least once or twice a week, he would sob, like red-faced, crying in the morning, begging not to have to go to school. And me not even knowing anybody, like all I knew about homeschooling was that that's what Christians do. And fuck that. I'm not going to do. And my kid needs an education. Like I, I can't possibly give him a better education than he's getting going to school. So he's just, he, ha- we have to figure out ways for him to go. And so we spent, and you know, my oldest son, he's very smart. He would get really good grades. And when he was there, when he was able to be there and participating, he was awesome. His teachers would say that he was so well behaved and he really got into the projects and he did well, but he just wasn't there enough because there were so many times that I I couldn't, I just couldn't make him go. I was so traumatized by his panic attacks. And, you know, so by by middle school, I would say fifth grade, um, the school started noticing how many absences he was having. And I tried to talk to the, count- the school counselor about it and said, you know, here's what's going on. And he, we found out that year that he had an anxiety disorder after going to a lot of different doctors and thinking he just had a stomach issue. It's a long story. But so we had it diagnosed. Um, After about a year of unsuccessful therapy, we put him on medication and the medication did help um, to a certain extent, but it really did not help with school. He still, I mean, he would have full on panic attacks in the morning, hyperventilating, um, trying to get me to take him to the hospital because he thought his heart was going to explode. I mean, complete panic attacks. And I would tell the school that, and their response was kind of, yeah, I mean, that that really sucks. But if you can just get him to school, we'll take care of him. It'll be okay. Once yeah. you get him here, he's going to be, like, he's fine with us. When he's in the classes, he's totally fine. I don't know what it is you're worried about. So they, I think they thought I was being that over-concerned parent that was kind of making a mountain out of a molehill. And... So, yeah, after years of this and trying to come up, we we got him a 504 plan and tried to make accommodations for him, but nothing helped because ultimately it wasn't about school itself. It was about his anxiety about being in a place that wasn't home and being there for eight hours and having no control over his life for that eight hours. And so I, you know, at one point I asked them, I think by seventh grade, I said, could we set up something where he just follows his classes using Google Hangout, you know, and stays at home, but he can watch the classes and participate. And I got a swift, no, that's not going to happen. And then fast forward four years, and that's what everybody's doing now. So I'm a little bitter about that. But <laughs> but yeah, so by se- I just finally in seventh grade, you know, I had we had this horrible meeting, which I actually wrote about in the um, Marissa McCool's book, she let me write an essay for one of her books. And that's what I wrote about was this meeting that I had with his teachers and the principal and the school nurse. And just how they I was crying walking out of it because they made me feel like such a bad parent because I couldn't force my child into the school building. And so it was at that point that I just went, you know what, fuck this, I'm taking him out of school. I can't we can't do this anymore. And the school basically said, okay, bye. Like, I think they were tired of dealing with it, too. So so then it was like, okay, now what do I do? I have no idea what to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how to teach, you know. I And so we tried an online curriculum for a while, which really is ju- it's exactly like school, just on the computer. He still would get panicky because he had to do things by a certain time and do these assignments in a certain way. And eventually, 
I just kind of, I don't want to say I gave up, but it was like, you know what? This kid is old enough that he has a really good grasp on um, logic and critical thinking. And he's already got his foundation in reading and math and science. And he loves science. And he just started kind of going down his own rabbit holes of things. You know, he wanted to learn about vaccines and why people would not give vaccines. So he would just learn all about that on the internet by himself and then tell us about it. It's because of the nanobots, isn't it? It is. It's totally because of the nanobots. <laughs> well, it's because the, the it. New World Order is trying to inject us all with... I mean, he gets really good mm-hmm. info on the internet is what I'm saying. Okay, good, good. But <laughs> so Anything that spells that, pharmacy with an F? I know, exactly. And says sheeple. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, I really don't worry about him as much as I used to. But now my youngest is 10 and he is just finishing up fourth grade right now. And he's... Getting to that point, he's not nearly as bad as my older son was, but he's getting to that point where I can see the love of learning seeping out of him. You know, like you watch it with your kids. Once they get into middle school, they just kind of, school becomes a chore. It becomes something you have to do. Learning isn't anything you want to do. It's something grownups are telling you you have to do. And you're learning things that you know, looking back on it, there are so many things I learned in school that I have literally never used and had no use for. And I filled out so many worksheets that were a waste of time. And now mm-hmm. I'm watching my kid do that. And it's, I ju- we're just, we're really considering before fifth grade starts just going, you know what, we're pulling him out. He do- He has no interest in it anymore. He doesn't want to go. He asks us to be homeschooled because his brother is. And but, you know, it's always I've always been worried about my ability to educate my kids, which, you know, I used to tutor also. (laughs) I used to be an English tutor for people who um, were learning English as a second language. Like when I was in college, that's what I did. But yet I'm still going, "Eh, but the teachers, you know, they know better than I do. And (laughs) now that we've had this quarantine, I've had time to start reading on child led learning and different types of homeschooling and it just intuitively seems to make so much more sense. If your kid it enjoys does. what they're doing, if it they really love does. it, they they learn it. Yes. You know, like, yes, have you found really that does. your kids are, they're enjoying what the things are that you're teaching them? Yes. So we, at one point, uh, when he turned five, I thought, now he's technically going into kindergarten. Uh, maybe I need to really ramp it up. And mm-hmm. let me look at this curriculum. So I started looking right. at a curriculum and we began it, but we flew through the, first of all, we flew through the curriculum. Mm-hmm. We started uh, on the same day that everybody else started, but we were nearly done with the curriculum by like, I don't know, November. It, right. We were almost done. And mm-hmm. so it wasn't one beneficial. He wasn't learning anything. And it right. was just like, we were pushing through because that's what we had to do. Right. Going and through the motions. Yeah. Not, and yeah. so when that happened, he started to pull away also. Mm-hmm. And and yeah. then he lost that whole I want to learn yep. feeling. Uh, and that little light that he always had when, when I said it's time mm-hmm. for school, he would run into the school room and we yeah. would get to it. Well, it was it, we got to a point where it was like, oh, it's time for school. And he just said, Ugh, OK, let's yeah. go do what we need to do. Right. And that's heartbreaking. Like, it's, hard. It it's hard when they do that. So we we threw yeah. it in the truck. Yeah, we threw that away real quick. <laughs> I, we weren't going to continue that. So we turned back to a, a child led program. Now, mm-hmm. I still follow state uh, state standards. Oh, sure. Which I is still, a whole nother yeah. issue. Yeah. Like. How how do, and where depending you are depending upon what state you're in also because yeah. some states you have to file paperwork mm-hmm. uh quarterly some of them you have to file monthly some of it them you have to It depends on the district you're in too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in Minnesota, with, it varies. Um, you have to meet with um, social workers as well mm-hmm. in some states, I believe. Goodness. Yeah, and that is that's Illinois. scary in itself. I'm in Illinois, so it's actually mm-hmm. really easy here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are we are one of the easiest homeschooling states. Really, That's good. if not the easiest. Yes. Oh wow. Uh, really nice. So we don't have all of these reporting issues or mm-hmm. having to meet with a third party. We don't have to do that. 
Yeah. So I do follow a state school standard, but mm-hmm. I don't use the curriculum that is provided by the state, right? Okay. So I don't, yeah. I, I develop lesson plans mm-hmm. that will hit the target points of the state standards, mm-hmm. but I don't use a, a, a public school lesson plan. So I develop my own lesson plans because, you know, history is whitewashed. And um, Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. We, I found out that, I, like I said, I knew nothing about it. All I knew was I knew some kids who were homeschooled and fundamentalist Christians, and they turned out super yes. weird. They that's all I knew the about weird it. Kids, they were they, always the weird was, kids. And it yeah. was like, I don't want my kids to be the weird kids. It's so but, funny. Yeah. But, I forgot about the part where we're not fundamentalists. Spoiler, <laughs> they are anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> People say you're homeschooled, but they don't act homeschooled. And it's yeah. <laughs> what is that? Because there's yeah. because I'm like, what what does that mean? Even oh, there's like, yeah. so much there's so much stigma about homeschooling in general and the reasons people do it. And I think the big difference between Christian homeschooling and secular homeschooling is I feel like a lot of times Christians are doing it, or at least fundamentalists are doing it to keep their kids away from certain knowledge. Big you know, they, science. They don't um, want the Whereas I want to do it to give them more than they're getting in school. I want yes. them, you know, to yes. to have access to anything they want to know about and to help them with that and not just leave it to someone else to decide, well, we're going to learn about this one historic figure and memorize some dates and that's it. And you're going to forget them anyway, but we can yeah. say we taught it now. So yeah, I know this. I have this uh, neighbor that actually pulled her kids out because she got really, she prayed about it. Of and course. um as she pulled her kids out of school because she didn't she felt like science was missing the truth. <laughs> and she switched over and used all of Ken Ham's books. That's how I know oh, about his curriculum. Fuck. She used all of his books. Mm-hmm. Um and I discovered this after the Bill Nye Ken Ham Ken Ham debate. Oh my gosh. Um, Cause she was she was posting about it and so I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm watching it too. And she was like, Right, he's made some good points. Go Jesus. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Okay, yeah, we're watching we, a different debate. <laughs> like, this is different. <laughs> I have, I really credit one local friend I have that, I mean, we're not super close friends, but we run in the same liberal circles because when you're in a small town and you're liberal, you know all the other That's liberals because like, oh, yeah, there's you, not that many of them. It's like, hey. But she is also a secular homeschooler and nice. she was really the one that helped me figure it out. And, you know, she said, I can't, I still remember when she said to me, going to school shouldn't hurt. Yeah, and exactly. it shouldn't be scary. It shouldn't. And it I've never occurred to, bring to me my, before. My fourteen-year-old home. He, yeah, I think he would he's do better. got some anxiety issues too. Doesn't yes. he? Yeah. And, but there's a lot that I have to fight, and, like contest with, and stuff. But, oh, because yeah, you have yeah, you have yeah, other I, legal. I. It turns out yeah. that in Minnesota there are homeschool standards. Like technically, you're supposed to be able to demonstrate on a yearly basis that your child can pass the state mandated testing yeah. and they give you two different options right but in our school district they don't give a fuck they do nothing oh, you file nice. one paper with them once a year and that and they leave you alone that's totally it and i've oh, at nice. first i thought she must be she can't be serious because she was telling she's like oh yeah they never they will never check up on you And I was still kind of nervous about it, but I filed the paperwork. You know, there's one woman at the school district who's in charge of the homeschooling or, you know, not not any curriculum, but she's the one that you send your paperwork to. So she kind of keeps track of who's being homeschooled. But you fill out the form saying, I'm going to homeschool and here's why. And you give that to her once a year and that's it. You know, you don't hear from the school district again. You just make sure you file it again the next year and you're on your own. And at first, I thought that kind of terrified me because I, I like was that, picturing all these Christian. You're leaving me in charge of this? This is scary. Well, it wasn't even that. It was like I'm picturing <laughs> all these Christian homeschool kids in the district not getting a good education. Well, yes. And I'm like, wait, they're not checking on those kids? Like, how, what are – but then, you know, obviously, the more I learn about it, the more I realized they're really not getting a better education in public edu- in public school. No. You know, that's – It's a lot you, of busy work. It's a lot of busy work. You, you're yeah. told that that's the only way to get an education, but it's not. And it's taken no. me this long in life to and figure I've, I've that tried. out. I pulled him out um, the beginning of his sixth grade year 
Yeah, I remember you talking about started, it. Started, I yeah, I, I had I did an online curriculum because I figured mm-hmm. I because I was working, mm-hmm. and I figured we could kind of just sit there and work together. He had his laptop right. and I had my work, and then we could just talk about things and work mm-hmm. through things. And um, it, he was re-enrolled again, and he missed his friends. And I kind of want to revisit it and yeah. see, you know, since you've had this time home, would you like to continue that? Like, yeah, just- we, my oldest son, we actually have a lot of really interesting discussions now. Like, he and I will sit and talk for two hours, and he will tell me oh about gosh. what I do that with he's- my six-year-old. Oh yeah, like he's yeah. fascinating to talk to now, and he's yeah. he'll tell me what he's interested in, what he's learned, and what he wants to learn about. And we've talked a lot about the whitewashing of history and what mm-hmm. has really happened in America. And he told me he's like, I I'd like to learn more about like like real history, you know, like not mm-hmm. the stuff they. Te- and I right I'm, right away I'm like, here's a here's a Howard Zinn book for you. <laughs> Go ahead and read some of this. This will get you started. That's the first thing that ever introduced me to the fact that anything might be different than what they teach you. But it's something he wants to know more about. And I feel like the kids that are sitting in school just learning the basic history, they think they've learned it and they don't need to research it any further. You know, yeah. How many so people yeah. did you know? Yeah. Also that like your 16 year old is like, oh, mm-hmm. I want to learn about the whitewashing, mm-hmm. right? Whereas yeah. my six year old. Mm-hmm. isn't even considering the whitewashing of history because he's right. getting because he's getting history. the real so on history Columbus day, yeah on columbus day we talked yeah. about imperialism and colonialism right yes and mm-hmm. at six years old and so he knows about um the trade routes and he mm-hmm. knows he knows all about slavery and God, that's so cool everything at six years old so he's yeah. growing within without that misrepresentation yeah, and right. it's it's going to be such a cool thing to see when he it really grows is. up and speaks to people. It's like, no, you're wrong. Oh well, <laughs> <can't> yeah, and wait. <laughs> part of it with my son, and he'll tell me this all the time, is that it's just that I specifically am his mother, and be, because I talk a lot about social activism, and I drive him crazy with it, and I'm like, you need to watch this Maxine Waters speech, and I do a lot of that shit. So. And I talked to him about, you know, if if you have friends and one of them is, you know, a person of color and you get pulled over, here's what you need to do to help your mm-hmm. friend. And you need you to, to realize that how you're treated isn't going to be how everybody's treated and that kind of stuff. But it makes him, he's just a lot more curious about finding things out. And then when he can learn something and he can come and tell us about it, my husband and I, and it's something we don't know, you know, I think he enjoys that too, because he's teaching us something that we wouldn't have known about but my honestly my biggest concern at this point is the social stigma aspect you know like what my parents and relatives and friends just the kind of shit i'm gonna take and and then uh the socializing part of it like how do you oh she muted i think she has a crisis going on right now (laughs) no i'm I'm okay sorry you're okay okay good um (laughs) And yeah, just like the socializing part of it. Like, how do you keep your kids engaged with other kids and getting that kind of external stuff? uh, That question comes up a lot. Oh, but how do you socialize your kids? You Mm -hmm. know, you don't socialize your kids when they're in school. They learn social they learn how to interact socially with other children, but these children aren't being taught how to socialize either. Right. They're just, you're you're sending, you're shipping them off and Mm -hmm. you're saying, learn between betwixt each other for you. Right. But the four year olds don't know how to socialize. So you're not really teaching your children how to socialize. And so my children, and this is another thing, when, when we go out, they say, your children are homeschooled? And I say, yes, I can't tell. I didn't know that they were homeschooled because they aren't, they're extremely social. They yeah. they come out with me and they see, we will sit at a, at a meeting. So mm-hmm. I am also an activist, an organizer. And just recently I ran for public office. Mm-hmm. Lots of meetings to go to, right? So they would come with me and homeschool while I was at a meeting, but Mm -hmm. they would also pay attention to how adults were socializing and how I was socializing with other adults. So when they enter a room, they will enter a room and politely address individuals 
Mm -hmm. like another adult that's socializing not sending children four-year-olds can't learn from another four-year-old that's it it just it doesn't happen and and when my four-year-old enters Mm -hmm. a room with another four-year-old he will Mm -hmm. he will try and have a conversation at the four-year-old's level but it's it he meets them at their level it's Mm -hmm. not socializing though it's just interacting they're interacting yeah. It's not socializing. So, so yeah, cool. a lot of people say that. Oh, how are you going to socialize? What's the, how are you going to get that in, that aspect mm-hmm. in? They get it themselves by watching people yeah, actually true. socialize, not not that's how, with their parents. That's how all kids learn most social things is watching their parents. Yeah. Yes. It's just yes. watching how – yeah, I – I put a thing on my Facebook page the other day because I was very curious. I just asked people to list one thing that they were they were glad they got curriculum wise at public school. Like one aside from reading or math, what most was one of it thing was they just learned from one that. really good teacher. You know, yeah, like most honestly, of, most of the answers were just yes, a and good most of teacher. the most so of I what saw they that and I wanted to answer it and I yeah. sat there thinking and yeah. I couldn't come up with anything. So oh my gosh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I didn't learn anything. In school. It was so interesting though to like, yeah, so many people said it. The things they still use were practical skills like sewing yeah. a button or learning how to balance a checkbook or something. And the the things they wished they'd had were also practical life skills. You know, they wish they had learned more it, about yeah. basic reproduction or Mm -hmm. you know how to cook eggs or just like stuff like that they felt unprepared to go out into the world yeah and and it really and 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 here I have a six-year-old who can bake bread so oh yeah like my kids I don't fuck them I don't cook for them they learn how to cook them (laughs) exactly (laughs) but I think one one very good point is that for a lot of kids bullying is all they remember from school and they spent their entire childhoods being traumatized by bullies you know i know my uncle well, and then answered a one lot of those parents that are like, way you know, and just tough them up T- yeah. it'll toughen yeah, them up toughen but up why yeah but why, why should they have to be toughened up like why what's yeah. the point of and that's the, there's that such continue. a generational issue too with i think because the world has changed so much like our kids aren't growing up in the same world that we did or that no. our parents did. They have different tools at their disposal. And for me, it's been hard to force my child to do his math assignments on Google Classroom and say, you know, you have to get this done. So what I've been doing is just saying, here's a calculator, you know, figure it out. And he'll just be like, oh, my gosh, thank you. Thank you for letting me. But all I think is for him, that's a tool. That's a resource. You know, he's going to have that yeah, in his I don't pocket for the rest of his life. A calculator, it's dumb. It's I don't, you know, or like when he's filling out an assignment to read something, he doesn't like the book he's being forced to read. First of all, and then to answer questions about it, he doesn't care because he's not thinking about the book because he hates reading it anyway. Like it's. If your kids aren't enjoying it, they're getting nothing out of it. And then as a parent, I'm the one that has to say, you need to finish this. You need to get this done. You need to turn this in. You need to give this to the teacher. And mm-hmm. it's just, I can't, I'm, I'm sick of it. I don't want to do that anymore. Like it's, I just, I picture the next, you know, eight years of his life being just that, you know, nagging to get homework done and, but then if you, I feel like if don't you. Don't get me wrong. I still nag to get things done. <laughs> Well, I do, and it does nothing good, but yeah. Yeah. Nobody listens it, to me. Ho- in homeschool, you still have to nag sometimes, mm-hmm. but sometimes. But, sometimes, but you can easily bring it back to you chose oh. this. <laughs> right. Do you, do you still want to complete the work? You were the one who selected well, it. And I think when you're doing the nagging, you're at least nagging <laughs> them to do things that you believe in. You know, it's stuff that you think is valuable, whereas I'm having to do it over stuff that I don't think he needs or that I don't think he is going to be of benefit to his life at all, just based on life experience and his interests. And it's like, you know, I don't his teacher told me this year that I really need to get him to start reading more than just um, fun fact books and joke books and graphic novels, because he, he should really start reading more um, fiction and novels and and I'm all I could think was like okay but why why I mean if he wants to great and I can show him and say look at these books you should try these out did you but ask just, her why 
I didn't at the time. I just kind of was because you're you're raised to believe that teachers are this authority figure and they know better than you do. And so all mm. I could think was, well, she knows something about reading that's more than I've been trained on. I was never trained on how to teach kids to read. So I just I basically went along with it and was just like, yeah, so but in my head thinking about, I'm not doing that. Let's talk about that aspect yes. of homeschooling, because Please a do. lot of times as a as a a parent and mm-hmm. who has decided to take on this homeschooling, you get, there's a lot of guilt They're external, mm-hmm. but there's also a lot of internal guilt. Am I doing it yes. correctly? Are we succeeding? Are they moving along? Am I mm-hmm. holding them back? Right. All of that oh, my God, runs so through your head. Yeah. Um, and that's part of it. Like, Oh, I don't mm-hmm. know what the process mm-hmm. of, of teaching, of teaching them how to read. Am I doing it correctly? Are they advancing right. mm-hmm. the correct way? Right. Right. What's the correct way? Yeah. Nobody I, I don't knows. Know. <laughs> the teachers don't know themselves. Uh, they get taught by another individual, but humans mm-hmm. humans fail. Okay, we, we make a lot of mistakes. And so, yeah. yes, there are individuals who are out there putting curriculum together based on science. But, hey, that science is available to us as well. So we can read that report. We can read that journal. We can see how children's uh, children learn how uh, to help a child advance further. You need to sit. You need to hit specific aspects and and you need to repeat things a considerable amount of time. These are all basic things that we can look up ourselves Mm-hmm. These teachers are also looking it up, but they've made it their life. They've made it their life to study it for four years. And that's mm-hmm. it. You know, yeah. many of them don't continue studying. Mm-hmm. So we're sending them off thinking they're experts in their fields, but mm-hmm. they're as much an expert in their field as you are in yours because they yeah. have only studied it for four years and then they've started practicing it. You're an yeah. expert in your field and you mm-hmm. are probably still studying it and practicing it as a homeschooling mm-hmm. parent because I have been studying and and learning about cognitive development for six years now. So I'm oh, wow. probably more up to date than most of the teachers are out there. Right. And so yeah. we continue to learn how to teach our children. Mm-hmm. It's it's out there. The information is out there because they got it somehow. So you can get yeah. it yourself. Well, it's especially now, you know, now yes. prior to, you know, bef- when I, I actually when I was going to college, my goal was to be a high school teacher. That's what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I took You'd have to talk to children. No, 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 no. I wasn't going to talk <laughs> to children. I was going to be a high school teacher. <laughs> I like talking to teenagers, not young children. Do you? Oh, they're worse. Yeah. They're fascinating. I have three I've of always, those things. They're awful. They are fascinating. Ugh. I don't know why. I just, but yeah. So I took like two semesters of teachers training and just noped out of it right after that. But um, hmm. I. The kids say I, yeeted out of it. You. <laughs> yeeted out of it. It's the. The kids, but yeah, the a lot of vernacular. what we learned was we weren't really learning is, how to learn. teach. I don't either. Amy, it's a thing Amy I know. knows. I have three okay. teenagers. It's the kids. Yeah. It's okay. the, the yeet. They yeet things. It's throwing. I don't know. Getting I, out of yeet. I don't know. My youngest, his new thing is yoink. He says yoink all the time when he grabs yoink, things. I yoink, I know. I know that's yoink. Old, that's yeah. old. That's, that's yeah. a, weird. That's like a scrunchie. Scooby it's coming Doo. right back. <laughs> yoink, I know. Scooby-Doo made that. Made that. Yeah. But so, yeah, back when I was in college, we were given, you know, certain books to read and, you know, shit to fill out. And but we didn't have ready access to the Internet back then. It was just becoming Mm -hmm. a thing. And so it's not like now where I can go and truly find anything I want to find. I'm fucking old, Amy. (laughs) Apparently. I've always had the internet at my fingertips. Oh, aren't you lucky? I did not, Amy with a Y. (laughs) I did not, so. I remember when the internet started. That's how old I am. I remember (laughs) my first time in a chat room. (laughs) I do too. I do too. I just told my six-year-old, let me film that. Let me film that. Yeah. And he turned and looked at me. My six-year-old looked at me. He's like, what mm. is that? <laughs> <laughs> and I I had to take a step back. And I thought, oh, yeah. that's right. Well, let me explain yeah. this to you. 
back in my day, honey. Yeah. <laughs> I oh, yeah. was when you had to record, you had to record something and you had to hit play and pause at the same time to pause it during the commercials. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yes. And then fun. hit record again in Good order times. to like. Whew. Or when you were doing the radio and you were recording songs off of the radio, mm-hmm. but they would cut in, they would put in their, their ads like halfway into the song just so that mm-hmm. they could. And yeah, when you were a poor kid and you couldn't afford to get like to the cassette tapes, you had to wait right. till the radio played it and record it on a blank tape. You knew and it was going to come because they only <laughs> played seven songs, so it yeah. was coming. You knew if you waited long enough, it would come back yeah. around if you just waited like an that hour That SWV so. song was coming. I knew oh it. Oh, my God. Good times, man. <laughs> the late 80s were great. Anyways. 1992. Yeah. Good times. Um, <laughs> what was I? Oh, God. I, oh, so I've been... Um, going down this YouTube and internet rabbit hole of unschooling and child-led learning. And I watched a whole speech about unschooling the other day. And there's there's some philosophical things in it that I don't agree with and can't jump full head first into. Like, into unschooling? Into unschooling, yeah. Okay. And it seems like there's a lot of kind of libertarianism that goes along with mm-hmm. it. and But the basic principle that your kids should be learning things that they enjoy and that actually public school isn't something that if you don't send them to that, it's not going to ruin the rest of their life. Because it's not a one size yeah. fits all. That's exactly. The thing. Yeah. We're treating they, it they like all it to kids. Be like a, this is how kids learn. They go right. in, they sit down, they write down the answers, they do yep. the test. Like that's, And they need to be at this level at, at this all. time. Like they need to, here's the test. And if they don't hit and, the criteria, then they're, there's something yeah they're not smart you need to you need to spend more time making them do the work or and that's my kids under you know they get they put the sheet down and there's like a green level and a red level and a yellow and he's always kind of in the yellow just not quite keeping up with the math and yeah that shit makes him hate math because then he's forced to do that was always me too and oh me too i when i went to college and i actually took a math class that broke it down for me and i Mm -hmm believed that I could do it, I was able to do yeah. it. Well, there's but kids in those learn classes where they're like, you're ways. just not good at math. I'm like, I guess yeah. I'm just not good at math. Yeah. I remember in preschool them telling me when he was, because he's always just been a, a little mover and a shaker. But <laughs> when he was in preschool, they were concerned because he was four and he was having a really hard time sitting still and following when they were talking about. Um, so let him run around. Circle time. Like, that it, My thought, I'm like, really? A four-year-old? He doesn't, he yeah. can't focus when you're talking about some boring thing that right? he has no interest in. Shocking. Like How that did was, that My happen? mom used to say that. She was like, why can't your son sit down, sit still for yeah. dinner? I'm like, I don't have a problem with him taking a bite and doing oh, yeah. a lap around the table. I, I have had no to problem tell my with mom that. He's that four. Too. <laughs> my mom would get so irritated because our my older son. My mom would get son, so frustrated. She was like, yeah. why? It was my oldest too. She's like, yeah. why can't he sit still? Why can't he sit still and eat dinner? Everyone else is sitting still. I'm like, because he's a child. Yeah. And she was like, can't you teach him to sit there respectfully? And like, he's taking bites and then he's running a lap. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. Who's like, it her? like, my older one was so just, he had just great manners just because, like, not, we thought yeah. it was because we were great parents, but turns out it was <laughs> just kind of him. But then the second one, yeah, he can't sit down. And it got to the point where we're like, I don't care as long as he's eating something. Yeah. He'd take a bite, he'd wander off. He'd come back, take another bite, wander off. And it would drive that's my, my mother yeah, that's my oldest. crazy. My mother was. <laughs> It but would I'm just, just like, because I don't want to fight with my child every single night. He's eating. Mm-hmm. He's not bothered. Like, if we went to a restaurant, I wasn't going to let him oh, wander around. Oh, always and, stick to stills at, we- at restaurants. Yeah, he that's knew different. That you learn different restaurant manners. Yeah, but at exactly. home, who gives a fuck? I don't care. Okay, like, I don't care. <laughs> kids, man. They're all so different. I just. They're the worst. They really are. They're <laughs> terrible. Well, I, I'm going to have to go soon because I have to do a Easter Zoom conference with my in-laws. She has Easter in-laws. service. She has Easter mass. I have to talk about Jesus and how he is risen. But is there anything mm-hmm. else you kind of think is important to talk about with homeschooling in general? Or I mean, I feel like we could have a whole other conversation on this. But, oh, yeah. You, um, well, I, you know, uh, if you're on the fence, well, first mm-hmm. of all, you're, you're probably already for, you're already doing it because of COVID-19. But um mm-hmm. Most people are, right? Yep. Some people may, may be taking a break, but um, if you're on the fence, you, it's a good time to mm-hmm. give it a try since yeah. you're already probably doing it. It's, yep. 
not for everybody. I will mm-hmm. say this because as a parent, you may not have the capacity to do it. And that's mm-hmm. okay. If you believe perhaps that your child would benefit, but you personally don't have the capacity, then damn mm-hmm. it, send them to school. <laughs> Yeah, because oh, totally. in the they long will be run, okay. yes, they will be okay. And in the long run, mm-hmm. it will save you tears of blood and it will save them <laughs> tears of blood. And so just yeah. damn it, send them to school. That's fine not to have the capacity. Not everybody can. But if you're on the fence and you believe that maybe it's something that you all might enjoy and you have to mm-hmm. enjoy it because mm-hmm. it takes <laughs> a lot a lot from you. It takes a yeah. lot of organizing, a lot of patience. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's why I haven't really stuck stuck my guns <laughs> about yeah. that. It's the organizing aspect. If you, you weren't a very organized individual to begin with, mm-hmm. you'll need to change that really quickly. <laughs> I am. I just it's it's the working full time yeah, and when you doing work, that. It's, uh-huh. It's it's Well, too- I feel like some kids do really well in school. Like I did. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think there's I did. no harm I did in it too. if it's I thrive. Yeah, if there's a kid who loves it, great. I but and I'm I don't really think it glad works my mom didn't homeschool me. Forever. Oh my god, it would have been so um, yeah. terrible for Whew. me. Capacity, right? Capa- not yep. all <laughs> not all adults <laughs> have the capacity. And no, so and absolutely that's not. okay. And that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, I think it's just I would have been the weird kid. Yeah. Oh my god. Sure. <laughs> oh, I got it. Sorry. I'm texting my husband cuz he's stomping on the floor cuz we're supposed to do the Zoom thing, but anyway, thank okay. you so yes. much for being here. Um I Yeah, we I think appreciate we could, it. Yeah, and we sh- I feel like I learned a lot. I really do too. I think have this, some pointers and feel like I have a better grasp of Unlike most what's of our expected. episodes, this one might be useful to people. Um, <laughs> yeah, so Okay. So yeah, thank you for coming so on. So our, our listeners thank won't you. know what to do with themselves. I know, right? <laughs> yes. I I can't. Um, we can't do the bonus content because I have to get on fucking Zoom. Um, That's fine. And That's I'm not going to read it's the Easter. patrons. Everybody's we gotta busy go. with church anyway. It's fine. But yes, thank you so much for finding the time, and I will yes. probably pick your brain more. So okay, yes. I'll Absolutely. be here. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.